So in much of my work, uh, we talk about the fact that change is constant uh, and it's always affecting, is there anything happening here? I think it's great that the techies are the ones who are yeah. <laughs> So uh, what we usually look at is that we have an expanded view of text. We need a broader view of text to understand exactly what's happening. Um, what I would like to push for is to further expand that view of text and to think about think about, about <laughs> I got screwed up on the first one. Um, so one of the things we need to think about is the way that we can expand upon this to include all the interactions that our students exist in now. Uh, case in point, one thing that guides me, yes, yeah, not even make shit. It's 20 minutes. Yeah. Yeah. It's 20 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, he sent this to Frank. He said, I'll have this on that, Frank, to uh, George. He said he had it all set up. Just do it. You be my baby. Uh, so one of the challenges that we have is the, the concepts of uh, the concept of dices that uh, obviously Don uh, wrote about earlier, and it moves a lot of my work. It's one of the main reasons why I'm a researcher now, and that's basically uh, time and space, and, and uh, impacts the meaning of the word. So today is tomorrow, uh, but that even changes as we say it. So the the concept of dices really impacts my work and the way that I look at it. Um, also, Doug Belshaw will be over tomorrow. Uh, we look at ambiguity. I like the idea of having amb uh, ambiguity in the way that we view and work with text. Okay, and the reason is that you have some uncertainty or some vagueness in the way that we look at text or think about text. I think it's important to uh, cherish the ambiguity that we have there. The reason uh, is that ultimately I think we have flexibility in the way that we think about text. I think we have a certain amount of flexibility uh, to adapt, we have flexibility, we have a little bit of uh, wiggle room, I don't know if that's a uh, research term, but I think that we need wiggle room in the way that we think about text and we interact with text and the expectations that we have for our students to interact with it. Um, why? Because the future is uncertain. We don't know what's going to happen. We don't know when the slide's going to advance. Uh, <laughs> we don't know what the future's going to hold for us, what the tools will be, we don't know what text will be, how we want to interact. We have a lot of uncertainty that we have to deal with. Um, another reason why, and I saw Kevin do this last year, so I thought I'd do it too. That's another reason why. But Kevin had more parameter costs. Is he here right now? You would just say like read and stop. But I don't have, I'm not, I'm not Kevin the Andrew. <laughs> another reason why is that this is what our children are dealing with. They're in an informational society. They need to deal with these tools. We need to prepare them not just for the, the, the text that they have now, but the text that they will have in the future. We need that uncertainty. We need that flexibility. We need that wiggle room. We need the opportunity to modify uh, what's happening over time. Uh, ultimately, what this allows us to do, or what my view of text allows me to do, uh, other than take a lot of Advil and drink other stuff, um, is that we allow students to respond and critique and remix and create. Uh, recreate. They get to look at something that's happening online or a text that's happening and remix it or recreate it or respond to it or critique it. Um, but the ultimate cha the, the challenge is what happens when we encounter objectionable material? There's a lot of garbage online. There's a lot of uh, things that people spew. What happens when you some see something highly objectionable, like case in point, It's been pulled off Amazon, and you're spending about two, three hundred bucks for a little teeny tiny book. So the Barbie Computer Science book came out, and there's a firestorm of debate. debate. Pamela Ribbon, uh, she basically put together a post, which I deleted the words because I had issues about cursing in front of the audience right now, which I'll break in about two minutes. Um, so she blew up the entire post talking about how uh, the gender issues and how it basically made women look horrible in terms of computer science and design. And some of the things, because I want to highlight it, is um, Barbie basically talks about how she wants to show how computers work. She's going to make the robot uh, puppy do cute tricks by matching up colored blocks. And then Skipper obviously says, the puppy's so sweet, you know, can I play it? And, and Barbie says, I, I, I'm just designing it. Okay? And specifically, because I want to get people mad right now, uh, she says, you know, I need Brian and Steve's ideas to turn into a real game. 
So I'm designing it, but I need the boys here to help me design this thing so we can figure out how to make a real game about it. Okay? This upset a couple people. <laughs> but the nice thing is that we can take this text now, and if you go online, Casey Fiesler, uh, who is a doc student, uh, I think at Georgia Tech right now, uh, basically went in and remixed the text. Took the text down, remixed it, and changed it over and said, hey Steven, nothing wrong with a dude like in pink. Okay? So they went through and they remixed the text and they switched the gender issues that were in the text before. Uh, and the reason why is Casey, Casey said, if you got an issue with something happening right now, do something about it. Remix it. Change it. Reconstruct that text. That's what that flexibility allows us to do. Uh, so if you don't like the current narrative, go remix it. Change it. Make it something that's appropriate for you. They took it a step further. So a couple different people decided we're going to take the idea and we want to allow others to remix it. So they put together an app where any one of you right now, and you should stop right now, stop listening, and you go remix it. You can go on and remix and share it out online instantaneously. So now anybody doesn't have to think about, oh, how do I download that and remix it? Do it on your own. And now there's a Twitter feed. Feminist hacker Barbie, people are sharing all of the stuff they remixed. So, you know, what is this, a mini disc? What is this, the 90s? Kind of? So they're, they're remixing this content and sharing it online. So they're taking the power back. Why is this important? It gives us the flexibility, but the challenge is that there are a number of questions that we still have. We have to constantly redefine and re-examine what this all means. We have to re-examine exactly what we talked about. We have to continuously re-examine and redefine text. We have to think about literacy and literacy practices. Uh, practices. Um, and last but not least, I think we need to think about our own use of digital content. Forget our students, forget our, our teachers that we work with, our own. We need to think about how we can not just be consumers of content, but curators of content. So all you Pinterest lovers out there, you're doing good work. And constructors of content.